So, greetings, children of the Most High. This is your brother Chukemeka. So, I was actually about to post another video when I got this message yesterday. So, I decided to do this one and post it first. Um, we heard that the people in the north, northern part of Nigeria, have suspended supplying any foodstuff to the southeast. Uh, or some people say to the south, but mainly to the southeast. And this is the best news I've received in a very long time, to be honest. This is the best news I've received in 2021. Let's put it that way. So I know some of you may think this is a period of hardship or whatever. This is an opportunity for us to go back to the farm. How can we be clamoring Biafra, 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 but we can't even feed ourselves? How, how does that make sense? Ibu tribe is the only tribe in Nigeria, let me say this, the only tribe in Nigeria that imports 90% of their food is Ibu. You see the house has to go and plant tomato, tomato that will refuse to die, you plant it, it keeps going, and they will sell it for us 17,000, 17,000, 20,000, they will sell one cow for 300,000, and we'll buy it and we are proud, carrying ropes as if we've achieved something. What happened to the Igbo farmer? This is what we are known for before. What happened? Let me paint a picture for those of us who are not who are not in Nigeria. You see, in the southern part of Nigeria, there's higher population and fewer lands. So it's mostly subsistence farming. In the northern part of Nigeria, there's lower population and a lot more, more land. So people can farm. There can be subsistence farming as well as mechanized farming. Also, most people in the north are polygamous. They have a lot of wives, and those wives, they do nothing that other than farm. So, as a, as a result, they have a lot of food output from the north. And in the south, south, especially in the southeast, most of us don't even see the value of going to farm. Everybody wants to be an importer. Importer this and importer that. And so we don't go to farm anymore. So something as small as pawpaw, we don't even plant. If people build house, they cut off all the grasses and the trees and put interlocking stones. They won't even plant green. They won't even plant ugu, pom fluted pumpkin for consumption. They expect these things to be brought from the north. Look at this one place in, in Anambra State that I know of where the people who tap wine, the pan wine tappers there are from Kotonu. Kotonu, they come to tap wine. Palm wine that Igbos are known for. Now we are not even doing it again. So this is crazy. We cannot continue in this trend. There's a whole lot of benefit in indigenous agriculture. As some of you know, I am a farmer myself. I know that. How can we not plant things that we eat? The beast, even cassava, abacha, gari, we don't even plant that anymore. Now that the northern people have decided not to supply to us, that literally going to starve us to death. And this is an opportunity because I know the Hebrews will respond by going to the farm. The rainy season is about to come. So this is planting season. This is just the best thing that can happen to us, to be honest. In the north, they, like I said, they have a lot of land and they, they have wide open spaces. They have a lot of labor. There's a lot, they have a lot of kids. There are a lot of people there unemployed, just doing nothing. They, in the morning, they would wake up in the morning and drink ogogoro till night. I'm not kidding. When I went to the north, that, in some villages in the north, that's what I saw. You see, you see young boys wake up in the morning, they just go to one place and drink brukutu till night. There's a lot of cheap labor there, you know. <coughs> and like I said, they marry, they are polygamous, they marry a lot of wives. But for us, unfortunately, we, we, we have allowed Christianity to convince us that our sisters do not deserve to be married. We've allowed the Christians to tell us that we shouldn't be having polygamy, one wife, one wife for life, which is never what the Bible says. The Bible never, in any way, New Old, any Testament, New Old, Contemporary, the Bible never said that. One of the reasons societies practice polygamy is so that everyone gets married. How can we be, how can we feel comfortable seeing some of our sisters 
not married. And we think it's their luck, it's their luck. That's not right. Societies should and must practice polygamy. That's the only way you have equity and justice in the land. Unfortunately for us, the international communities, they will frown at polygamy, but in fact, it's actually a crime to, to be polygamous, according to the white man. But homosexuality is not. In fact, they will tell you to do homosexual. Because they don't want you to reproduce. And we've allowed these Christians to convince us of this nonsense, to convince us that our sister is getting married is a bad thing, to convince us that having children is a bad thing. And that's why you see an average woman, they'll just have one boy and one girl, and say, no, I want to give them the best. Which kind will move best? The best thing you can do for a child is to give him or her siblings. That's the best thing you can do for a child. Unfortunately, we don't do this. And we live in a country with those who do. And that's why their population far exceeds us. And that's why they produce far better, far much crops, much more crops in the farm than we do. It's not that like our land is not fruitful. Our land is much, much fruitful. Than theirs. But we don't even have people to till the lands. A child, even a child that does not know ABCD in JS3, will still send them to school. Why don't you? If a child doesn't know ABCD in JS3, he is not supposed to go to school. Send him out and let him do something else. What happened? I heard that uh, in Aba, that they burnt down a flotilla of the cows and other things. And so they said they are taking a lot of losses and blah, blah, blah. They don't want to come anymore. Let them not come. We don't want them to come. Okay? Let them not come. Because they come with their cows to destroy our farmlands. Now, children, well, let me tell you something. This suspension in trade will not last more than two weeks. I guarantee anyone. First of all, there will be other traders that will arbitrage that. They will go themselves, drive themselves and get these goods and arbitrage it. But more importantly, these people know how much they are making from us. Do you think they will take their stupid die die cow and go and sell to Yoruba people for 300,000? No way. Nobody's going to buy it there. They know that the, it's the Igbos that buy this thing at exorbitant prices. Somehow, an Igbo man is proud of spending too much money to buy things. Especially things he, don't, he didn't make. I don't know why, but it's just what happens. somehow that's what we do. They know, they know how much money they are making from us. I, last December, I was trying to do a video in my community, and there's one of those garaki very close to my community, and I went there, and I was talking to one of the allies there, and he told me that that was, after that day that we were discussing, that was the seventh trailer that came with cows, and they, they keep selling off. As a matter of fact, in the entire garaki, or what they call garaki is this abattoirs, in the entire place there was no suya left. They sit there because of the Christmas or whatever that the whole suya is sold out. Can you imagine? The outside does not have suya to sell. Because Igbo is in an that have bought the whole thing. What are you Igbo selling that house house will be buying like that? What exactly are we selling that they will be buying like that? And when I say house, I'm 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 just trying to generalize it. It's mainly the full and that are actually in charge of all these things. What exactly do we sell that they buy for three hundred thousand and they buy it every day? What is that what is that? And we'll come out every day complaining that the full are destroying our deeds, destroying our deeds, and we'll still eat their cow. In fact, after complaining about that, we'll go and buy suya to cool down. Why can't we just abstain from their crap and develop our own? They have also good. We have Igbo goods that's much sweeter, much better. And a lot of farmers will be complaining that it takes longer to train Igbo goods. Have you tried? Have you tried to train Igbo goods? Have you tried to train Igbo cows? And it, takes, it took that long. We are developing the typical sign of a, of a tribe that's going to extinction. And it bothers me. It bothers a lot of people too. So this is an opportunity for us to take a turn. And <clears throat> brothers and sisters, I think there's, what, all this is happening in Abba and I've, uh, in Abia State basically. And I've stated clearly that Abia State and some part of Imo State is the children of Judah and Benjamin that is there. I think there's something prophetic. There's something biblical that the children of Judah are taking the lead in this to end this nonsense that is happening to us. I think it's prophetic. I think it's biblical. 
I will, I'll be happier if they know that they are actually the real children of Judah, of the children of the real Judah. But it's, it's prophetic that this resistance comes from them. Because those of us, God here in Anambra and other, other ones here, we've really, really dropped the ball. Anyway, this is a discussion for another day, but I am extremely glad it will happen. I hope it will be prolonged till the end of next year. Let them not bring their cows. We don't want. We have our own cows. If we train our cows and our own goats and our own chicken, even if we don't see Igbo cow, buy Igbo chicken. If you don't see Igbo chicken, buy Igbo, buy rats, eat, or don't eat meat. Go vegan for a year. Let us develop our own agriculture and feed ourselves. I mean, the most I bless you. Salam. So